Man, I can't believe no one was watching the back entrance manual. We just walked right in. No, just kidding. We're actually here on official business with our friend Ray Schaefer with Broad Arrow to give you an exclusive look behind the scenes, literally behind the scenes. Yeah. You've never seen a ballroom like this. I know you guys know what you're talking about when it comes to Porsche cars. Some very rare examples here for you. You're gonna have a lot of fun digging into the details. So why don't you guys go have some fun? Over 140 cars here for the auction, but we're gonna focus on the Porsches. And we're here before the auction starts. It's all quiet, just us. So come along. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. So I've picked up my uh, chin from the floor after looking at alls here, but really the bell of the ball is Lucy Bell. Yeah, uh, 718 Spider. This is, uh, people are wondering who drives 718s now, uh, where Porsche got that name. This is the heritage. Now, past racing Porsches, you've typically seen them in silver color, and I do see silver here, but this one is painted not only white, but sort of like a flat white. Yeah, so it was uh, came from the factory in silver. Uh, if you notice, there's no advertising on this car because back then, race cars really didn't have a whole lot of advertising, and they ran their national colors, and for the United States, it was white and blue stripes. You know, Ferrari it was always red, um, French, blue. This was uh, white with uh, the stripes, very uh, uh, unique to uh, the American teams. Now this is a very much a bare bones race car. If you look into the interior, I mean, you're sitting next to pipes and bolts and uh, I mean, this is the real deal. Yeah, it was uh, not big on comfort. It didn't have to be. This was the giant killer of the day. You're talking a uh, four cylinder, four cam engine. That's very powerful very lightweight going against those big 12 cylinder Ferraris and the big Jaguars and the big Aston Martins. Uh, this was very light and nimble and it just uh, showed its uh, superiority in the corners. I love how when you look into the interior, you see this contraption sitting on, I can't imagine that there was ever a passenger on this side, but they're carrying on their own tools. Yeah, a lot of the rules of the classes required it to have uh, sometimes a passenger seat, uh, even with the 917 required a spare tire. Um, it was uh, still a street car. You know, you could license this and drive it on the street. Now, this car was restored not too long ago, um, but in sort of the fashion of making sure that keeping everything that they could together as opposed to taking the whole car apart. And when they went to paint it, they also want to use sort of the original style or um, ways to apply stripes. And if you look at the numbers very closely, you can see the brush marks. That really has to be a single swipe or brush to make it look they would right. hire local artists especially at Lama, to come and paint sometimes the night before uh, the race so weekend would start their numbers now this car i know ray actually did a longer format video so if you want to know more details on this one check that out yeah and why it's called lucy bell this is lucy bell three this is uh named after uh, uh the business associate's wife um, and the French loved this car because of its connection to Lucy Bell. They followed the two previous cars that were also named Lucy Bell. Um, this is going to be a special car to watch at the auction. So Manny, if Lucy Bell might be above your budget, here at a third of the cost, you might be able to pick up this 1971 914-6 GT. Well, you know, I love 914s and this is the holy grail the of 914s enthusiasts. It is. Uh, they only built 12 of these factory 914-6 GTs. Uh, there was only three they put aside for rallying, and this was the Monte Carlo rally team, one of three. That's pretty rare. So maybe take us from the front to back quickly of some of the key things that makes this car unique. Well, the most obvious thing is the fender flares, uh, which I think they should have put on all the 914s because it really changes the look, gives it a much more muscular feel to it, and something that in the aftermarket, a lot of people have upgraded their 914 to the flares, which allowed wider wheels. Um, but this car was all about lightweight. 
the lighter the weight of the car, the more nimble it was, especially in rallies. And so every little bit of weight mattered. And on the headlights, where in a normal car, there's separate motors for each headlight. This was a series of cables that they would pull to lift up the headlight. So this is not a malfunction. This is just in the up position. Exactly. And they had to manually put it down. There wasn't any a motor, once again, to automatically put it down. The uh, hood, fiberglass. Now it was thin fiberglass, so they actually used balsa wood in the front and rear to help reinforce the hood. Uh, balsa wood, super light. Absolutely. And if you take a look at the interior, also all business. It, it's typical 914. They haven't changed a whole lot. They have the, uh, the, the race seat in it, but it still uses the 901 five speed transmission, the dog leg to the left. It was uh, a pure business, but a great sales tool for. Uh, for 914s because the 914 owner saw this and saw the same thing in their uh, little four cylinder that they took home from the showroom. Now as a motorhead, there's really nothing more beautiful than this view right here. Yeah, this was the GT engine, the six cylinder, uh, putting out a little over 200 horsepower. It uh, made this car a uh, rocket ship. Now, this car was dri driven by Gerard LaRousse in the Monte Carlo rally, but what I think was really cool was they also gave it, the fact we owned this car for a while, they gave it to uh, uh, Vic Elford to drive as a reconnaissance car in the Targa Florio in 71, which meant this is the car he drove around while people were milling around the Targa Florio still uh, before the race day. He was given this to learn that course and all the uh, intricate turns. So with 914s, uh, VW and Porsche are kind of in the picture with all this, and you don't always see a VW badge on the back of one. No, this was going to be a joint effort. Uh, of course, the Porsche family has uh, an interest in Volkswagen, so it only made sense that they partnered with, with Volkswagen. Um, unfortunately, uh, the deal fell through when the CEO of Porsche, of, uh, excuse me, of VW uh, passed away. Uh, so suddenly, what the bodies were going to cost went up and Porsche didn't make as much money as they had hoped with the 914, uh, but they still sold over 100,000 of them. Now you have a very original 73 914, not the sort of tough Brutus look of this one, but you very much enjoy yours. Yeah, mine's only 95 horsepower. Uh, probably one bank of cylinders uh, has more horsepower on this car than mine. Gorgeous car. Now, Manny, we have some history in a 959 in Germany, um, but I have to say this one's a little bit different than the yeah, one we drove. Yeah, this is not uh, your father's 959, <laughs> as they say. This is Breathe Over by Bruce Canepa's shop, uh, which uh, has pumped in up to 800 horsepower. Oh, I remember driving the prototype in. The turbo lag and the power that had was astonishing, and that was at a factory 959 level. I can't imagine what it's like to drive a rocket ship that's 800 horsepower. Yeah, so... I don't think we've ever had the chance to drive uh, this reimagined uh, 959, but from what I'm told, it's become much more livable, much more streetable of a car. And uh, for a car that basically this old, mm -hmm. that's it's saying quite a lot that this is still the GOAT, the one that everyone needs in their collection. So when they go through this car, not only do they make it more livable, add more power, but it's a perfect opportunity for you to add your unique touches. And one of the most unique thing about this car is the oak green metallic paint. Yep, you wanna make it, uh, like you said, exclusively to your taste, uh, like this owner did, this is what you do. Uh, but even before uh, uh, Canepa design touched this car, the history it had, I think makes this super unique that you can tell everybody who comes to look at this car what makes this car unique. Absolutely. So for those of you that are watching that are GTR fans, this car has a direct connection to that. Nissan bought the 959 to better understand what Porsche was doing to help them inspire themselves as they designed the GTR. And I'm sure they paid a little bit less than the asking price or the estimate for this car because this one's looking to go for 3.2 to 3.5 million. Manny, my mom has always said I've had expensive tastes. And in this case, it's very true because this is one of my favorites. This is a 1994 911 Turbo S with known as what's called a package. That's right. This had uh, everything in it. Uh, for someone who uh, followed IMSA, this was much like the race car that Brumos was racing. It was very similar. And uh, engine massage by Andal had that package in it, had the splitter in the front, 
Uh, what I really love that you can spot this from a mile away is there's rear fenders with the inlets in them that were hand formed. They couldn't stamp them back then like they do with the uh, turbos nowadays. It was a very unique car for uh, someone like you who had that kind of taste. <laughs> now to the casual onlooker, they would just refer this car as the bad boys car. Yeah, had Will Smith gotten the chance to get this instead, he would have gotten it. It's Bad Boys Plus. It has so much more than the Bad Boys car. It is a 94 and it is a 3.6, which was only available for the 964 in that year. Uh, but wow, what a uh, super special car. So you have very good taste. Uh, very exclusive, one of 17. Manny, we've been around uh, Career RSs, uh, and we're still actually standing next to one, sorta. This is a, a Carrera RS body, uh, but it was actually purchased as a body in white. And because this is a roof, it gets its own serial number uh, to roof. So, so it's technically not a Porsche. Not a Porsche. It was never really a Porsche. Uh, Porsche supplied the body to the dealer, who then sold it to uh, the Rufa Automobile Company, and they developed this RCT Turbo. We knew what the uh, Roof was doing with the Yellow Bird Turbo, and he continues this with the 964, in that this isn't a turbo body. If you look at it, it's the Carrera RS was an aero body car. So they do that for aerodynamics, as we learn. You don't have to have the turbo body to get the fastest speed. Uh, he didn't shave the rain gutters, but he put these little inserts, which nowadays, if you look, you can buy aftermarket and put it on your own 964 or G body to make it a little bit more aerodynamic. A lot of the Porsches today, especially with the regards to the interior, people like to customize them. And it looks like this car has a pretty unique interior that was inspired by a Porsche. Yeah, by Ferry Porsche's personal 911. It has like a silver knit uh, inserts in the uh, Recaro uh, race seats that are uh, leather on the outside, very sporty. It came on the RS. Had a 3.6 single turbo uh, that produced 370 horsepower. Of course, they changed little touches that roof added on, like the center panel is now gone where it said Porsche. It made a uh, single panel piece, which is very clean. Judging on the way that 964 rear panels tend to fade to pink, that's a nice alternative. Exactly. So for a mere 1.2 to 1.4, this one could be yours. Manny, my eyes are having a hard time focusing on all these cars. And here we are standing next to yet another vehicle that's probably close to a million dollars in uh, price. And to some, they may go, oh, it's just a 993. In fact, it's just a 993 Cabriolet. Oh, it's something much more special than that. Yeah, because uh, Porsche didn't make a turbo Cabriolet in, nine, in 1995. And furthermore, when they did finally come out with the 993 turbo, it was all wheel drive, neither of which is this. Now, today we know about the Sonderwunsch program and you can, you know, outfit or come with some crazy ideas. But back then, this is a creation of one of only 14 that were made. Yep, a dealership uh, approached a Porsche exclusive and said, uh, uh, basically, how many would it take for you to build a turbo cabriolet out of a 993 because it wasn't available yet? They said 14. Now, Manny, many people will see some familiar things. We see speed lines, we see these Euro markers, but back here, things get a little bit interesting. Yeah, so they didn't have the twin turbo yet that hadn't come out and they didn't have the turbo body. So they use a narrow body, but they take the turbo engine from the 1994 964 and they retrofit it inside this 993. And this is not an all wheel drive car. It is a rear wheel Simply drive. Simply rear wheel drive, which uh, is not something you usually hear when you hear of a 993 turbo, which makes it even more special. And add to the fact that it's also a cabriolet. Exactly. So if you peek across the top here, there's more special things to see because you'll notice this is a very unique blue-gray carpet, which leads into a very unique blue-gray interior. And I know Manny thinks a special engine with a single turbo real drive, that's cool. But me, my Radwood side, I think it's pretty cool that it's still got that cell phone to the right of the shifter. And I can see a ton of leather, including the dash which meant this probably spent quite a few hours at the exclusive shop. Absolutely. Truly a rad car. In the sea of wonderful cars, this blue pops. It's actually a 356 color. I don't think I've ever seen a 356 of this color, so I'll take your word for it. But <laughs> yes, it is striking. Adria Blue. And this is a 1998 roof BTR estimated about a million dollars. 
and this was once again a very exclusive card. He only made ten of them. It's uh, now at this point he's gone back to shaving the gutters, mm -hmm. just like the nine nine five nine. It had the uh, three point six turbo, putting out I believe four hundred and twenty horsepower. Um, standard six six speed transmission, uh, roof wheels. It was uh, made for top speed. Not only top speed, but top speed in comfort. Because if you take a look at this interior, this mocha brown interior is just simply gorgeous. And if you notice the on the uh, A pillar, B pillar, it's a little thicker than your average, uh, say, 993 because it has an integrated roll bar. Integrated roll, roll, roll cage uh, that goes from the front to the rear. So uh, not only is it fast, but it's also very safe. And as opposed to some roll cages where, which are exposed and you need to wear a helmet to protect your head, this is all properly padded and it's very functional. It's such a beautiful ride. Manny, here's your chance to relive your youth. Here's a 1978 928. This is, this is the one that was gonna replace the 911. Porsche was gung-ho that the 911 would reach its end and the 928 would be the car of the future. The 928s really are coming into their own. For a while there, people were kind of afraid. They were so ahead of their time, complicated maintenance and all that, but something like this now really does kind of pop in the sea of all these cars. What I like about this is it's something I can afford. 50 to 70 is the price they think they may get for it. Like you said, first year car, but look at that interior. Not only do they double, uh, double down with this, they've got a green leather and Pasha. Not only green leather and Pasha, but you can't deny how cool the green shag carpet looks. It's, uh, <laughs> it will win Redwood, appropriate since it's here at the Redwood section for uh, the Broad Arrow auction. But before Porsche was putting aluminum in their modern cars, they were doing it back then with this car. The hood, the fenders, the doors were all aluminum to make this as lightweight as possible. Now this vehicle here is a five speed. How much of a difference does that make in driving it? Well, the only other option was a three-speed automatic, so it made a huge difference, much more sportier. Way cool. Manny, this is the car that set me on my destination towards owning a Porsche. I had this car in red on my bedroom wall. Nothing more iconic than a slant nose 930. Well, while you're having dreams of this on your bedroom wall, Porsche was actually modeling this after their 935, which was so successful at Le Mans and other international racetracks that customers wanted their own version for the street and Porsche complied, but it wasn't a cheap option. Now this one is known in the US as a 505 option, but in Europe it's a 506. And how's it different? The biggest difference is the front. In the under the valance, you can see on the European version, there's a space for an oil cooler and slightly different valence. I think actually a little nicer than the, the US version, but boy, does this stand out. You don't see many slant noses. And on this year, they were only able to find 112 people to pony up that amount of uh, money to have this option put under their 911. And the amount of money they ponied up, they could have bought a 944. Tough decisions. <laughs> now, these cars are often uh, replicated or um, there's been packages in the early 80s where they took a standard 911 and did a slant nose conversion on them. But there are a couple of things that you can look at to see and understand whether or not it's a genuine factory built one. Yeah, it's the, uh, the, 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 the vents here on the fender. Usually it's hard to replicate the factory. The fact that it's steel, mm -hmm. a lot of them went fiberglass. So remember the uh, original option was almost $30,000. So people were encouraged to try to get a cheaper way to get this done because they get the same look. But the coolest thing is I like to use this for uh, trivia. How many Porsches use wood? I know, and if you're wondering where would they use wood on a slant nose 930 Cabriolet, the vents right here, these slats. If they're legit OEM, they'd be wood. And how can you get this car without box rockers? Oh, it's rockers. You have to, it's like it goes with the car. So Manny, you've got maybe half a million burning in your pocket. This could be yours, a 1997 911 Turbo S. And this is before Porsche started using Turbo S with everything. Having the Turbo and then the S was really, really special. Now a standard Turbo would have been just about 400 horsepower. This one makes about 430. Yeah, it has a uh, X package on it to give you a power boost. But what I think is really cool that it's not only exclusive enough to have a Turbo S, you add on the aero kit. 
other things that you see on this car that we probably are take for granted these days, just looking at these alloys, you look like, oh, they're just standard turbo twists, but they're actually very special turbo twists. Yeah, they're hollow. And this, this was offered on the regular turbo, but it did save a significant amount of weight over top the solid ones. Those of you that are taking a close look, you'll notice yellow calipers. In this day and age, yellow calipers may or may not mean the same as what we know yellow calipers are for. Yeah, they didn't have ceramics back then, but this was the top line. This told you this was an S, and of course, everyone wanted to paint their cal calipers yellow because the turbo has had it. Now, have you ever driven one of these before? I have not, but I will be happy to drive anyone's turbo S. Yeah, other than the yellow calipers, there's a body part. And right here, this intake you're looking at, that is unique to a turbo S. Correct. Manny, everyone loves a GT3, and this one is an aqua blue metallic, pretty rare color. It's not only rare, but it's the 997.2 GT3. So you have no sunroof, center lock wheels. It's starting to look more and more like a factory cup car. It with is. With a nice leather interior, but it's still that 997 shape and the size. This has uh, become the must have GT3, I think, in the whole GT3 lineage. And check out the interior, the seats that are the must have. So a lot of people try to retrofit those seats into their 997s and GT3s, but those come at a premium. Yeah, some people love them, some people hate them, but boy, do they look good in this car. Here we are at the business end of this GT3, and there's a telltale sign that this car is unique from a dot one car. That's right, 3.8. What everyone's looking for. Now there is the four liter, which is pretty much the unicorn, but this one here with a 3.8, Previously, it was a 3.6. Not only does it have the bigger engine, but it also has unique engine mounts, active engine mounts. That's right. And this shows the attention to detail in that Porsche was all about aerodynamics. Look at this little gurney lip it has on it, named after Dan Gurney. Dan Gurney. Now, not only do we look at this piece here and it's unique, but with the Dot 2, the top is unique. Yeah, no sunroof. Real uh, race cars, no sunroof. The sun enthusiasts roof. complained loudly when the uh, point one came out with the sunroof and they couldn't delete it unless they got the RS, so the sunroof was gone. Now, Manny, over here might be something within my budget. Here is a thirty to $50,000 Porsche. 1960, still vintage, it's red. It's actually a two-seater. It looks like a single, but it has a side saddle seat too. Oh, I didn't notice that. Now, I could also not only afford it, but I might go racing at Rensport next time. That is the hot ticket. <laughs> they actually had two races at Rensport 7, and if you had a Porsche tractor, you had a ch good chance of being accepted, and what a way to show off. Now, I know they make different sizes. What size is this one? This is the standard. The Master was much bigger, and then the Junior, of course, is the smaller version that probably a lot of people get that don't have a farm or a lot of uh, land to make it actually useful and just want to show it off. Now, I can only imagine my wife's face if I were to bring this home. But it's, it's a diesel, so it's going to, going to save a lot on gas. There you go. Manny, you're just teasing me, bringing me over to a 356. Well, everyone who listens to our podcast knows <laughs> that you said when you turn 50 this year, you want to have a 356 in your collection. Now, this could be me if I had about $100,000 or so to spare. Which is affordable, believe it or not, for a 356. In, in now, the collection that we're walking around and seeing, actually, 100 does seem very reasonable. Now, this is a 1959 356, which I thought was an A. Most people would say an A. Of course, Porsche, they always did this thing in transitions. Once they ran out of parts, and they had the newer parts, they would start building with the newer parts. And this is a transition car. It's listed as a 59, but it's got the body and the features of a B. Now this one seems to be a little bit on the modified side. I wouldn't say it's a hot rod, but there's some touches that the owner has done to make it maybe a little bit more sporty. Yeah, well, obviously he improved the seats, steering wheel, uh, definitely a driver. Um, if you're looking for all originality, it might not be the car for you, uh, but from the outside, it still looks perfectly original. And what I think was really cool about it is this participated in, I think, the 59 Treffen, PCA Treffen. This is when the club would organize a trip over to Germany, and when they landed and got off the plane, their 356s were all waiting on the tarmac where it represented the Porsche to welcome them and start their journey and they're touring through Germany. What a way to start the ownership experience of a 356, which hopefully I'll have one day. But can I ask you, because I don't think I've seen this many, there's 
this protection strip on the side of this 356. I've seen a lot of 356s and not all of them have that. Yeah, this was like the Speedster stripe. It wasn't found very often on uh, on the coupes, uh, but I think it looks nice on this car. I love the ivory with the tan. I see the updated seats and I see the, some updated safety equipment as well. So this is the type of car I would like because it really looks like it's meant to be driven. Exactly.